Hey folks, today we're going to talk about something that on the surface seems almost like a small deal, but the more I get into it, it's going to be an even bigger deal, and it's a big deal for the Nintendo Switch. So today we learned that Silicon Studio is bringing middleware and engines to the Nintendo Switch. As I said, it seems like a minor piece of news. There's obviously going to be various engines and middleware brought to Switch over the lifetime of the system. Same was true with Wii U, although uh, there was far less of these middleware and engines brought over. And the reason that this is a big deal is because uh, middleware and engines is how games are essentially made. They're, they're, they're kind of the backbone of video games. So the more of these that are on the system, the more games that could be on the system. Uh, because a lot of different studios use a lot of different engines. No, not everyone's using Unity. Not everyone's using Unreal Engine 4, etc. There's a lot of different ones out there. And Silicon Studio is bringing the PostScript middleware Yebis, Y-E-B-I-S. Uh, they're also bringing an all-in-one game engine called O-R-O-C-H-I, or Orochi, uh, which has 40 over 40 dev tools for it. Uh, they're also bringing their next-gen engine, which is Zenko, which is X-E-N-K-O, uh, which will be out in April, so later this month. And all are going to be made compatible with Nintendo Switch. And the company has already offered middleware and graphic technology for the Switch SDK. Uh, and all of this uh, was brought to light by Nintendo Everything. Now, here's where this becomes interesting. Uh, there are some games out there that have been made specifically with Yebis in, in terms of Yebis 3 and uh, it is now confirmed that it is Yebis 3 support that the Switch is getting. So it's not just like an older version of Yebis. This is the current version of Yebis as confirmed by the studio who created it, Silicon Studio. So here are games that, that use that. Figureheads, Moto GP15, Ride, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Now, we know that Dragon Ball Xenoverse is coming to Switch already. However, one game I haven't mentioned yet also uses this engine and really opens the door for possibilities. And it's from a studio that has been confirmed to be doing something on Nintendo Switch, but we don't know what. And the game that supports it is Dark Souls 3. That's right. The engine that Dark Souls 3 uses is now fully supported in its latest version on Nintendo Switch. That's, whoa, mind blown. People have been wanting portable Dark Souls for a long time, and now we could possibly get Dark Souls 3, and it could possibly be the trilogy. That, because we, since Nintendo fans have never had a Dark Souls game, you could see a release that has Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 all packaged together for 60 bucks, Nice and clean on Nintendo Switch. That would be insane. And see, this is why this news becomes a big deal, because Nintendo Switch is selling extremely well. It is using architecture that developers are familiar with, since it's a uh, NVIDIA GPU-CPU combo. It is technology that developers have worked with before, whether it's through the Shield or whether it's just in general with PC gaming, because what this this GPU does, what the CPU does, makes porting to it extremely easy from PC. So when you have a game that you've already developed on a PC, it's not that hard to bring it to the Nintendo Switch, even if you have to cut back on some features. You need to cut back on draw distance. You need to cut back on the level of detail. You know, maybe you can't have as high of anti-aliasing as you want. But that that's all irrelevant. The Switch can run it. It's just, you know, going to be, is it running it? to a visual standard that you find to be acceptable as a developer. Now, obviously this doesn't mean the Switch is all powerful and is going to get every third-party game under the sun, but if this Yebis 3 support leads to Dark Souls 3 coming to the system, that just opens the floodgates because the Nintendo Switch is doing very, very well for itself, but it's doing very, very well for itself in general thanks to Breath of the Wild and that potentially being one of the greatest games ever made and the hype for that is still driving sales to this day but it needs more right yes we got mario kart 8 deluxe splatoon 2 arms and all that stuff but it needs a third party games because that's what was missing 
from the Wii U. I mean, you could argue Zelda was missing too, if you don't count remakes. But that's besides the point. It needs big third-party games. And right now, I think the biggest third-party game it has is Skyrim, which is a five-plus-year-old port. Or, you know, maybe it's only a year-old port if it's the remastered version. But either way, Skyrim's a pretty old game now. And Minecraft, which, again, <laughs> that's been out forever. Not nearly uh, a system mover these days. But beyond that, what is it, NBA 2K18? Is that the next biggest title? I mean, there's Sonic Forces, I suppose, as well. Uh, there's not a lot of really big third-party titles that have committed to the system yet. Heck, we don't even have Call of Duty committed yet for this year. So this could be huge. You could see a Dark Souls 3 coming on over. You could see uh, Bethesda deciding to bring you know some bigger games over. This, this is huge. I know a lot of third-party developers are taking a wait-and-see approach with Nintendo Switch, but in order to wait and see, there's got to be something on the system to wait and see with. <laughs> you, you can't just be like, yeah, we're going to wait and see. Oh, Zelda's selling really well. Oh, Mario Kart 8's selling really well. Oh, ARMS is selling really well. And the Nintendo Switch is selling really well. But there's no third-party games on it uh, to gauge if your game's going to sell. So someone's got to take the leap. And you're not going to get a whole lot learned from, say, NBA 2K18. That's not going to teach you a whole lot, except maybe EA could convince EA to bring Madden to the platform. Um, is already going to get FIFA, hopefully the full version. But I'm just kind of throwing it out there that uh, when you have an engine that supports a major, well-known game, uh, even though there's another game using it that's going to be on the platform, I, I feel like this is a perfect opportunity, uh, a no-excuse opportunity to see Dark Souls 3 and maybe the entire Dark Souls series on Switch. And the thing is, we know the studio behind Dark Souls 3 has already gotten the game to run on Switch because they announced that they got it to run on Switch in some capacity already. So having the full engine supported is only going to allow them an easier time bringing the game to Switch if they can, you know, if they want to continue pursuing that. And again, I think if they bring Dark Souls 3, they have to bring Dark Souls 1 and 2 with. So this is a bit of a big project for them to, to bring all three games to a brand new platform. But it can be done. We saw it with Bayonetta. Uh, and Bayonetta 2. Obviously, Bayonetta 2 was made for Wii U exclusively, but you know, it, it wasn't a hard time for them to bring Bayonetta from the 360 and PlayStation 3 era over. So, yeah, this is exciting. Uh, it doesn't mean anything quite yet in terms of seeing Dark Souls games, but it's a step in the right direction. Nintendo Switch is getting things right, and they are now starting to get support from graphic engines that Nintendo would have never gotten support for before. So this is awesome. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know, but this is exciting news to me. And as I said, it's going to fly under the radar. Even though we're talking about it, there's not going to be a lot of places talking about it. Uh, man, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime signing out.